my I am currently walking one of my favorite places on earth uh, this is Utah Beach where on June 6th of 1944 the uh, American forces uh, with the 4th Infantry Division landed uh, to, to move in and, and secure the right flank of the Allied invasion of Normandy and there, there are a couple of monuments that they have here, really nice museum uh, right here on Utah Beach that we're going to take a look at here in a moment. And uh, in particular, we want to focus on the engineers. Well, if we're going to be talking about the engineers on D-Day, I thought that a good place to start would be right here at the monument for the 1st Engineer Special Brigade uh, right here at Utah Beach. Uh, the engineers hold a special place in my heart. Uh, my grandpa was a combat engineer in the Korean War. And uh, if we go over here to this side of the monument, well, you can see all of the different companies and battalions that were involved here, including the 237th Engineer Combat Battalion. Now, Eric brought something today that we're going to show from a guy who was in the 237th. Uh, but engineers on D-Day made up about 25% of the assault force, and it, it was the job of the engineers to clear beach obstacles, to blow up uh, you know, the seawalls and open up gaps, and to clear minefields. So, so there was a, a lot that that these guys were tasked with doing on D-Day uh, and were, were very, very important to the, the overall mission of the Allies. Uh, and this monument right here was, I think, one of the first monuments to be erected. Uh, the, this one, uh, there's video that's out there of uh, this monument being dedicated on the first anniversary of D-Day in 1945 uh, and you know there's like big crowds and there's you know military reviews and uh, we did a previous video that I'll link in the description uh, about you know some little girls who showed up and and had dresses that were made out of parachute material uh, but you see them in the video and, and in the pictures uh, but anyway yeah so, so this is one of the uh, the first monuments to go up here on uh, in, in Normandy uh, all right, we're going to move over to the beach now and take a look at a very rare D-Day artifact uh, that was right here on June 6, 1944. Utah Beach in Normandy, France, and I brought with me today a really unique artifact. This is an original assault vest. Now, assault vets, vests are very unique because they were only used by the assault troops and their supporting troops on D-Day. They were specifically uh, made to be used on D-Day, and they were, I guess you would consider them almost an experimental piece of equipment and they turned out to be not very favored by the men and so most of them were discarded so they're very very rare um, there were some surplus ones found after the war and that's what most of them are but this is one that was truly combat worn and it belonged to the man in this photo whose name was Manuel Manrique and he was in the 327th combat engineers and they were attached to the units that landed here on Utah Beach. And of course, their job was to clear this beach of mines and obstacles and other things that would impede the landing of the ground troops. And um, he was a Cuban-American, 
and one of the really interesting things besides all the interesting pockets on here is he actually put his name inside and he put a little uh, Cuban flag and wrote Cuba in there and it has his his name and his full serial number and uh, this is the first one I've really seen uh, that is that an actual t combat used version there's plenty of mint ones around that I like I said that were surplus and um, this is one of the items we've been looking for at the Gettysburg Museum of History for a long time this came out of a long time collection and we're really happy to get it and um, it, it's it's just an honor for me to bring this back to Utah Beach today um, you know the hasn't been back since World War two and uh, this gentleman here wore it on this very beach, June 6, 1944. <laughs> We've moved back over to the monument to take a little bit closer look at this super rare assault vest. And uh, if we get a little closer look, well, you can see again there's the, the star and the Cuban pride reflected in this vest along with the name and serial number of the veteran. And as Eric was mentioning, this assault vest was not exceptionally popular with the troops. Uh, there was a, a rush order for this that was put out like in late 43, early 44 and uh, they barely got these vests to the troops in time for D-Day. Uh, the idea was, you know, you could load it down with gear and if you're in the water you could, you know, kick it off pretty quick. But you see all these pockets where you can put weapon or ammo and, and different things like that. And uh, uh, again, the engineers used it for, for gear. Uh, I'm actually going to have Eric kind of flip this around. Um, the engineers came in, you know, they had on average about 75 pounds of gear that were they were carrying. Uh, 40 pounds of that would be explosives. So you would think that something like this would be pretty handy. Uh, but really, the thing was way too long and it was really heavy. And also the grommets were in weird places and didn't quite, you know, you know just rig upright. Uh, so, so it was kind of a, a failed design uh, when, you know, you look at it. Some troops like cut them down. But anyway... Uh, old uh, Manrique, or Manrique, however you say his name, uh, wore this very vest on June 6th, 1944, uh, at the invasion of Utah Beach. Pretty amazing to have this artifact right here uh, on this very spot where he came ashore.